We are live. How to get rich in 2022. Buy these four stocks now before it's too late. Pick one is a play that energy prices will keep going higher and higher as long as there's a conflict in Europe. And it looks like NATO wants to wear Russia down and keep this going as long as possible. There's rumors the EU will ban energy exports after the French election, which just completed. Uh, so, so far, no signs of that. We've actually got oil prices crashing due to the China lockdown. But our play, Boyle, is the gift that keeps on giving up 13% today. It's a good thing we didn't rotate too early into our oil play. And we're going to wait on that one, as you know. Uh, we were talking about it on Friday, but I didn't pull the trigger this morning. Pick two is a play that interest rates are about to collapse due to a monumental fall in GDP growth from China's lockdown and from interest rates and energy costs killing demand. We're finally starting to see that our play TMF is up 4% today. Pick three made a 20,000% return in its first five years, and I believe it will go up at least another 400% in the next three years. All we need is a weakening dollar and falling energy prices, and this play is getting ready to take off. This is our favorite tech company, uh, which is actually a cryptocurrency called Ethereum, ticker ETHE, up 2.5% today. And pick four, this was actually up this morning, it's down now. Wouldn't it be nice if all four were up today? Uh, but fit, pick four protects your account against a stock market crash and made a 1,000% gain in a month in 2020. It's the stock crash insurance UVXY. It's down 2.5% this morning. It was up quite a lot Friday. So do yourself a favor and put as much money as possible behind these four stocks before you miss out on massive profits in the weeks ahead. Now, on April 6th, we sold one half of our boil which is natural gas from the US for 139% profit. Prepare, prepare to sell the remainder after Europe bans all Russian energy exports or Putin cuts them off as a war tactic. Expect natural gas to go up a lot. I mean, we're gonna get out of harm's way, take profits and rotate. Our top selling advisory service is now up 32% year to date for 2022 after returning 233% in 2021. That means every $10,000 placed behind this strategy turned into $33,000. Now, last year we had just about exactly the same strategy. The only significant difference is that we've added bonds to our portfolio in 2022 after being out since 2020. And I'm a big fan of being a bond bull uh, because that's the only way these crooked politicians can keep borrowing money. They need to drive rates lower over time. And now what these central banks are trying to connive is how to get interest rates to go negative with digital money. So let's take a look. Here's our trade alert for a $10,000 portfolio. Now again, if you have 20,000, just double these figures. And if you buy our product, you'll have a membership area we can punch in how much you want to invest and it will auto calculate exactly what to do. Step one, buy 70 shares of UVXY. That's the crash insurance. Step two, and again, we've seen this uh, double and come right back down this year. We usually don't touch it. It's there for only really bad events. Step two, pick up your bonds, buy 149 shares of TMF. This is the 20 year treasury leveraged times Three. This is my highest conviction trade to at least, at least double to triple your money over the next two years. I find it extremely unlikely TMF goes any lower than it is today um, and that we're really on track to see it go to new highs. Uh, now, also, if you just look at the track record of bonds through history, uh, it's not smart to bet down on bonds, as you can see. Since the 70s, there's only been five years where they had a negative return. And we just came out of two years of negative returns. Peak inflation is here. Get ready for deflation. What we've been betting on for the last two years, we're prepared to do the exact opposite bet moving forward. 
And so we can see this is not only the longest bear market for bonds, it's also the greatest decline. And once you realize the US government will be insolvent at interest rates at this level, uh, you're gonna realize they will do whatever it takes to get those rates back down. And so we can just see the rate of change and decline in the TLT is at a, a record level. This will not last. Now, if rates are gonna go lower and we're not gonna have things snapping in financial markets, uh, we want to be long growth stocks. Our favorite growth stock currently is Ethereum, stock ticker ETHE. This is the Grayscale Trust. that gives you exposure to Ethereum, 175 shares. Don't worry about going to Coinbase and have the risk of getting hacked. Just pick up ETHE. And they're pushing hard to convert to a ETF, which means uh, you could actually outperform Ethereum with ETHE in the near term because it's trading at a discount compared to the assets uh, that this uh, OTC stock currently has on its balance sheet. Now, here's a look at that beautiful Ethereum play. I look at this as the windows of decentralized operating systems. Now, imagine if you could buy Microsoft when it was only five years old and then realize it takes decades to mature the market. In fact, it uh, looks like Amazon only represents 1% of total retail sales. And look at the growth it's had for several decades straight. You're super early. Now, I actually have a private equity offering uh, where I'm doing a lot of the work in these applications that have been built on the Ethereum blockchain. I'll tell you what, this is some ghetto technology that's in the very, very beginning. Uh, we're nowhere near hitting peak prices for this beautiful growth asset, Ethereum. And again, uh, you're getting it at about a 50% discount from its recent high. This is a beautiful time to load up on our favorite growth asset. Now let's talk about what could be fueling cryptocurrencies to higher levels uh, this year. First of all, interest rates falling. I think that's going to be the main driver. Uh, but the other thing we like to see are countries devaluing their currencies. Okay, so Japan is already printing like crazy to protect their bond market. And you can see what's happening to the yen. It is crashing. Okay, you've lost 20% of your purchasing power in about a month uh, if you're a Japanese saving money in the yen. And why are they doing it? They will not allow their bond market interest rates to rise. It's called yield curve control. And if US interest rates don't fall soon, we will be forced into the exact same problem. Uh, China is now printing to protect their real estate market and their currency is now devaluing. Plus they're in a massive, massive lockdown destroying their economy. Um, so that's really two of the big things uh, that are gonna help prop up cryptocurrency prices in the short term. But the most important one in my opinion will be to get the uh, expectation of inflation to fall to slow down the Fed tightening schedule. Um, and to get interest rates on US debt products to fall. That'll be the real driver uh, to weaken the dollar and take crypto assets higher and energy costs lower. And so the conflict in Europe will be critical for that. Uh, but right now you've been fighting a strengthening dollar while you're holding your cryptocurrencies. And that's gonna be a huge headwind that we believe is on the cusp of a major reversal. When the dollar falls, cryptocurrencies will jump to new highs very quickly. Okay, step four, this has been our big money maker this year. And boy, oh boy, has it been very, very productive for the portfolio. 39 shares of Boyle, um, maybe the war ends in May, big fat maybe. Uh, we'll just have to wait to see. The rumors that they're gonna completely sanction Russian energy um, the big money's in oil, but we've got China locking down. It looks like Shanghai's about to go into lockdown. Uh, meanwhile, the U.S. economy is slowing down. So I, I decided to stick to the one that can give the better potential return and that would be more likely used as a war tactic by Putin. So the big money for Russia is selling oil. The little money uh, is in natural gas, but he could cause far more pain to Europe by shutting off those gas pipelines. Um, so if they're gonna continue to pressure Russia by sending billions of dollars to support Ukraine, uh, I can see Putin easily starting to 
uh, essentially cut off their electricity by killing the natural gas. So we're still long boil. I do want to get us into NRGU, but I decided to wait a little bit because it looks like China's trying to drive that oil cost down uh, right now. So we've seen boil go up as high as 100 last Monday. We didn't take profits because uh, we're looking at what was coming into the uh, to the future here with the risk of the war escalating. And it's jumping right back up right now. So we, we got out of half the position, I believe around 70. I wish I'd pulled some more profits at 100. Uh, I dipped back down to 70 and we're back to 80 today and we remain long. So let's look at the asset allocation for a $10,000 portfolio for our high risk strategy. I will also cover our safe growth strategy at the end of this webinar. Uh, but if you're on a free trial, this is what we get you started with. Uh, a very simple, simple portfolio with as few positions as possible. Now, the way this chart is, is set up is to have a defensive and an offense. The defense is primarily investing in assets that are deflationary, while the offense is investing in assets that are inflationary bets. And so you can see, uh, currently we're still more on the offensive inflationary side uh, than the defensive deflationary side. On the defensive side, we have UVXY, the crash insurance, 70 shares. Right now that represents about 11.5% of the portfolio. Now again, the asset allocation percentage goes up and down all day. We're not targeting that. We're only targeting the right number of shares. Okay, US Treasuries. We believe we have hit peak interest rates for the year and these will fall until there's more stimulus pushed into the market. And so uh, unless there's some kind of crazy energy shock that gets outrageous, uh, which could happen, we're watching for it out of Europe right now. Uh, I believe TMF is probably the single easiest way to make money over the next 24 months. Uh, that's currently at 22% of the portfolio with 149 shares. Next play is Ethereum. This is our favorite long-term play. I expect to be investing in and out of this position for the next several decades. It's the Windows operating system of decentralized technology. It's beautiful. We could spend hours talking about what it's done. It's growing faster than the internet did in terms of user growth. Um, and it's a significant threat to banks globally. 175 shares representing 35.9% of the portfolio. Okay, the play we're most likely to get out of first uh, will be Boyle. And I, I'm hoping we get out of this play by May and see uh, diplomacy out of Europe. And so I've been hoping we'd see diplomacy out of Europe since the war began. And so far there's really no end in sight. Um, so as long as that is occurring, Boyle and NRG will make a lot of sense. And uh, we did decide to hold back on NRGU today uh, because of what's happening in China, trying to, it looks like they're trying to drive uh, oil costs down with these lockdowns. So uh, Boyle, we've remained long and it's up significantly today, 13.4%, continuing to drive profits to the portfolio. 39 shares there. Okay, now it's important to know the bond market's on the verge of crashing the stock market. Uh, we've gone above the trend line for interest rates. I do not believe we're going any higher. TLT 120 is the sand in the line uh, that I told everyone. We would buy bonds uh, at 125 and at 120 we would get very aggressive. And I thought we would be looking at that after the midterms in 2023, but boy, oh boy, that bond market priced in uh, all the inflation and rate hikes in a matter of months, and here we are. Uh, so I expect essentially surprises uh, in deflation for the remainder of the year and for bonds to perform very, very well. So TLT at 121.38 is a beautiful buy. If it goes any lower, it's going to crash everything around it and end up being the winner uh, regardless. So TLT, uh, touch that line in the sand that uh, would be detrimental. Now, just think about it, 3% interest rate is significant to a $30 trillion in debt country. That brings our interest payments to almost $900 billion a year. It's just, uh, just mind boggling to look at that. And so we can see these interest rates go up until they crash. And so 
uh, that's one of our favorite plays for the remainder of probably the next two years. Yields and energy prices cannot remain at this level. Um, so we got to be careful with betting on inflation and high energy costs. So very important to follow the news flow out of Ukraine and Russia to predict uh, just when these oil costs are going to come back down. Um, and then it'll be a good opportunity to get back into that. Now, the second the conflict ends, uh, and simultaneously, we got to see China reopening supply chains. They've now shut down Foxconn, which produces Apple iPhones. I want to go along FNGU to diversify our tech position in the high risk a bit more. That gives you 12 great tech companies, uh, one of which Elon Musk just bought out, and two of which are all stars out of China. And so FNGU will most likely be the play that we rotate into out of boil if there's diplomacy and an end to the lockdowns in China. Now, alternatively, if things are gonna hit the fan, China is gonna stay locked down, who knows how long, energy costs are gonna go through the roof, the war escalates, then I would rotate boil, breaking into new highs, I would sell that into F and G, or excuse me, into TMF, into treasuries. So if the war is going to escalate, everything is going to get really nasty. We'll sell oil. We'll go into TMF. If we get diplomacy, if China fixes their supply chains, we go into F and G. And that's really the only two trades I see coming in the near term for the high risk portfolio. Now, the last time the U.S. tightened while China and now also Japan and probably Europe expand credit, it was a really nice time for Bitcoin. It went up 4,400 percent. So just because we have the Fed tightening doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a bad time period for cryptocurrencies. And that's why it's important you watch our webinar every Monday, Wednesday, Friday to be ready for sell alerts. And don't miss out. Call Dean now to upgrade at 505-322-7515. Okay, we'll review the returns of both strategies, the exact asset allocation. Uh, at the end, I'm going to jump into my news feed and charts, and then we'll cover safe growth, high risk, exactly what trade alerts we see coming down the pipeline, um, and when we might potentially uh, cut boil in half to get some allocation to NRGU. Uh, but what's happening in China is making me question where oil prices are going to end up in the short term and why I held back today. It looks like Shanghai is now about to go into lockdown. It's been a month of a lockdown in China right now. Okay, Lynn Alden says, to quantify it, if US debt is 30 trillion and the US weighted average cost of capital reaches as high as 3%, then the federal interest expense alone would be 900 billion. Adding the deficit angle gets to well over 1 trillion that needs financing each year. Uh, and don't forget, we're planning to start doing quantitative tightening. Uh, this fellow says, I've been arguing all along the goal of the proxy war between Russia and Ukraine is to weaken Russia. Secretary Austin made this explicit today. He said, we want to see Russia weakened to the degree that it can't do the kinds of things it's done in invading Ukraine. Force the enemy to react by crossing enemy lines. Feign innocence when enemy reacts to red line being crossed ensures favorable public opinion. Finance endless war to weaken enemy with full support of flag waving public make meaningful negotiations, negotiations impossible. And that um, seems to be the plan. So we want to hold on to boil until there is diplomacy. Japan readies a $48 billion package to ease inflation pain. Kyle Bass says the Communist Party of China needs much lower commodity prices, food, oil, gas, and a perceived strong yuan. With the globe full of printed cash as a result of the virus that Emanated from Wuhan, the CPC is now panicking into full city lockdowns and currency manipulation. China unexpectedly cuts Forex reserve ratio to reverse yuan carnage. Uh, this is a joke, but uh, funny enough, Joe Biden, can you send me another billion dollars worth of missiles for Ukraine, Raytheon, but won't Russia just blow them up? Joe Biden, that's the plan. <laughs> China's Premier Li, the economy faces increased downward pressure. Okay, they're trying to have five and a half percent GDP, but they've locked down the whole country. 
Indian crude oil purchases from Russia, 40 million barrels since February 24th versus 6 million barrels in all of 2021. Beijing is about to go under lockdown, joining Shenzhen, Guangzhou, and Shanghai. Oh, excuse me, it's Beijing that's getting ready to lock down. Shanghai already is. Uh, Chinese savings and tensions going up. All deflationary. Steel makers tumbling in China. Elon Musk poking fun at Bill Gates. Apple's supply chain is on edge as Foxconn suspends production at two facilities in the eastern city of Kunshan. Okay, so here's the record tightening we've seen due to uh, the dollar rising, oil rising, long-term interest rates rising, gasoline rising, and expectation of Fed hikes. Uh, so likely what we're going to actually see for the remainder of the year is the opposite, easing. Europe was waiting for the outcome from the French election to announce the full Russian oil embargo. So that's next, and then oil prices go vertical. Uh, so that's what I'm waiting to see if that really happens. But in the short term, we're seeing oil get crushed. If we had jumped into NRGU on Friday, we would have been down 8% today. Uh, so I'm glad we waited a bit for that. The growth rate of the world's population has been around a meager half a percent for centuries. Uh, so he's just looking at the demographics here. And Elon Musk always points this out. Despite all the technology, uh, it actually looks like we're gonna have a pretty severe labor shortage because there's not enough babies coming online to support everybody going into retirement. Rao Paul uh, has been pushing the bond angle uh, too early. We got in at 125, it went as low as 120. Uh, if you've been jumping in since then, you've been doing really well getting the very bottom. Uh, Jeffrey Gunlike was pushing bonds earlier this year when they were much higher. Uh, but I agree, I, I see a big slowdown coming and peak inflation behind us. So what worked uh, from oil going from negative to 134 and interest rates rising, I think the exact opposites on the verge of working. Uh, for at least the next year or two. And so he's looking at all sorts of data showing slow down, slow down, slow down all around. Uh, and what does he say? It will soon be time to buy bonds. Well, he's been saying to buy bonds for a while, but you would have been crushed if you'd done it too early. Here's a look at bond returns through history. And there's never been a crash of this magnitude. By the dip uh, from Jim Bianco. Although I'm not so sure he's been advocating to buy bonds. Uh, if we're entering a stagflation period, this is saying you should be buying gold. Not so sure we have a stagflation yet, but we will see. Um, we might have a Goldilocks opportunity in markets here uh, if inflation falls quickly enough. Global assets compared by market cap, real estate 326 trillion, bonds 124 trillion, equities 109 trillion, gold 12 trillion. Uh, Peter Thiel had an interesting presentation at a Bitcoin conference comparing gold being equal weight to stocks during the 70s, a decade of inflation, uh, and expecting Bitcoin to catch up. Uh, so we can see gold is nowhere near equal weight to equities. Are we entering a paradigm shift of what backs up currencies? Maybe. Uh, Zelensky is ready to keep the war going, wants more weapons. Mr. Trump will probably be back on Twitter soon. That'll be exciting, uh, entertaining, if nothing else. Uh, Pelosi's rescheduled her visit to Taiwan. Uh, 
Um, so maybe the U.S. is happy with the outcome of Ukraine and wants to replicate this conflict with China and Taiwan next. We will see. Okay, good. So that gets us back to how far I want to go. Okay, here's a look at bonds over 40 years. Uh, here's what you need to know. For these crooked politicians to continue growing debt, which they absolutely must do to make good on all the promises they've given voters, they have to drive interest rates lower. And they're scheming right now how to get these interest rates to negative territory. And it's going to be having to do with digital money that um, essentially has a time limit to how fast you can or how long you can keep it before it starts losing its value. Uh, so they're already testing it in China. It's coming to the U.S. Uh, very soon. And so you can see the trend is lower and lower and lower rates. If they don't go lower, the whole thing comes apart. Here's that TLT. Now we're playing TMF, so it's a three times TLT. Um, so massive potential. This is likely going to new highs. So massive, massive gains. I'm getting potentially ready to either double TMF or uh, F and GEO, as we've discussed, both betting on lower interest rates. Uh, the housing sector, the biggest market globally, okay, it cannot have these rates going up. They're going to have to start making these rates go lower. Uh, let's look at the yield curve spread on the two and 10 year, uh, inverted for a tiny split second and started to steepen. That usually indicates about a 12 to 24 month window before the next recession and a very bull market ahead. Um, so that's what we're anticipating currently. Here's your yield curve. We're still inverted on the 20 over 30. We're inverted over the seven over 10. Uh, that is one ugly hunchback of Notre Dame type yield curve. Um, so we'll keep looking at that as we progress. Okay, May, we, uh, we're we entering the Fed blackout period right now, so they're not allowed to do speeches. Last week, they're talking very hawkish. Uh, what they like to do is talk really hawkish and then deliver slightly dovish, and the market seems to love that. Um, so... Uh, what we're going to expect with the May meeting is 50 basis point hike and begin a $95 billion a month runoff. And I believe as long as they do that, the market will be quite happy in terms of yields going lower. This chart, we're looking at the VIX term structure. This is what UVXY plays. Pretty wild chart here. Uh, we're still seeing the most hedging in May and June, uh, presumably worried about how hawkish the Fed will be. Reverse repo, so it's $1.7 trillion sitting in it. Uh, not happy with the interest rate on the short duration bonds that are available in the market. So they're going to the Fed to borrow their uh, short duration bonds. This money could all be injected into the financial system once interest rates peak. Dr. Copper, we're looking at copper versus gold. This has not been very good predictor uh, lately of interest rates rising. Because uh, you can see they've been trading in tandem, um, even though rates have been going straight up. So not getting a good signal from that. In general, many people believe if copper is going up faster than gold, we have a strong growth economy and interest rates will rise. If gold's going up faster than copper, we have a stagnating economy and interest rates will fall. Um, so far, no signal. Okay, this is NRGU versus Boyle, our two energy plays we like, both leveraged products. Uh, if you go out far enough, NRG is kicks a major ass. We played that for most of the last year. So we rotated into Boyle this year once we saw this uh, crazy, and at first no one thought it was gonna even happen, Russia invading Ukraine. Uh, but now Boyle's been giving NRG a run for its money uh, with NRG only up 125% and boil up 217. We need to be very careful. Uh, the second this diplomacy is reached and sanctions are reversed, I do see oil having some pretty, and, and natural gas having severe downside risk ahead. Uh, so we will be selling boil as soon as we can, as soon as this darn conflict comes to an end. Uh, okay, this chart, we're comparing lumber futures to oil. 
And uh, it's telling us there's risk for downside on oil. It predicted lower oil prices three months in advance last year. Um, and it's predicting it again, uh, three months in advance this year. So there's just the, the right catalyst holding it back. Okay, the, the DXY has a strong resistance level at 101. Highly unlikely unless there's a crisis unfolding, it goes much higher. Uh, now there is a crisis unfolding, of course, with uh, China, Japan, uh, letting their currencies devalue and Russia driving up energy costs or, well, or at least NATO due to sanctions. Uh, but all of these could reverse, which is my expectation. The US is running twin deficits, which over time should drive the dollar lower. Um, and that's where I'm expecting some really significant returns in our cryptocurrency position. Here's the uh, Japanese and Chinese currencies devaluing currently against the dollar. So they've given up on trying to uh, keep keep their currency valued uh, one to, uh, at old conversion rates against the dollar. Now in this chart, we're looking at a third cryptocurrency we're very bullish on. So I like Bitcoin in our safe growth strategy. We're long Bitcoin with GBTC. In our high risk portfolio, we're long Ethereum with ETHE. If you are a paid member, reach out to Dean, ask about our private equity offering. Uh, there's only a few spots left if you're not accredited. Uh, we're putting a bunch of money into Polygon. And this is the one I think will dramatically outperform Ethereum and Bitcoin and you just can't get access to it uh, from a stock account. So Polygon is a lot like the Lightning Network for Bitcoin and where I see extreme returns ahead. This chart, we're looking at Ethereum against silver. I've been contemplating uh, the right entry point into gold and silver. And if it could help reduce volatility in our high risk portfolio, which is long Ethereum. And, uh, and the reason why I've been interested in this is if it can have a opposite return as Ethereum, it could help give us a more even steady profit with less volatility. And so for a very short period of time, you can see that exact correlation where with one going up, the other is going down. Now, if I zoom out, that correlation breaks down pretty, uh, pretty quickly here. Um, but, but yeah, we may be entering a period of time where this could play out. So keeping a close eye on it. Uh, we did well with gold in the last bull market, got out, missed this most recent run up and been kind of sitting on the sideline because I still see strong job growth ahead. Okay, now here's a bizarre picture. We got NRGU, the oil and gas companies crashing as interest rates rise. That's highly unusual. Typically, uh, it's exact opposite. So perhaps the oil markets predicting interest rates are going to go lower from here, which is also what I believe. If that's the case, we want to be buying the NASDAQ. We want to be buying cryptocurrencies. We want to be buying F and GU and treasuries. Okay, in safe growth, we have a play in emerging markets, and it's been a painful play for a, a year now. Uh, we may be finally hitting that turning point. If the dollar is about to weaken and China is going to stop killing its own economy, uh, emerging markets has in the past, from 2000 to 2008, outperform US markets by seven times. And so we keep reviewing this chart uh, to, to give you faith on why we have you in this position. Also Ray Dalio's favorite position. Meanwhile, we go look at some of the leaders coming out of emerging markets uh, and Alibaba now down 22% since, uh, since April. Uh, Tencent down 10%, Taiwan Semiconductors down eight. And so we haven't added to the position yet and it continues to disappoint. Uh, the European index uh, started to make back the war losses, sold back off last week. Uh, in general, I think bonds need to slow down, inflation expectations need to slow down, and stocks are gonna be entering a good period of time. So our safe growth strategy, uh, which has had some pain in the last 72 hours of trading hours, uh, should be at the end of the pain if I'm right on interest rates. Uh, everything's been getting beat up. Rare earth metals, copper miners, and uranium all taking a little bit of a nosedive. Now we were talking Friday for the safe growth strategy to rotate RMX and uranium into the oil play in RGU. We held back uh, and so 
again, I, I think we possibly have lower oil prices ahead if the Europeans are bluffing about Russian sanctions and Russia, and then China stays in lockdown. Um, so watching that news flow very carefully. Um, and so far, it's been smart. We would have lost money had we rotated uh, into that on Friday. Gold to silver, uh, we see a big gap where silver is trading much lower than gold and gold in an uptrend, uh, easy money to be made. And again, another asset beaten up over the most recent period of time. I haven't pulled the trigger on gold or silver yet. Okay, so this is the most important data. Have we hit peak inflation? I believe so. Uh, March is the two year anniversary where everything went negative. Oil went negative, okay, so. Um, Prices don't have to go down, they just have to stop going up and this inflation rate is gonna start falling rapidly. Everything's pointing to a very quickly falling uh, inflation rate. We have rent coming in that's sticky. We have the uh, wages are coming in sticky and we're gonna have sticky food and energy costs. Uh, but in general, everything is slowing down rapidly because there's been no new stimulus uh, for over a year. So all those STEMI checks uh, that were really fueling this are slowing down. So I believe we are going to have dovish surprises on inflation. Um, and the most important thing will be to get China reopened and to get these sanctions against Russia uh, relaxed. Now it does look like a lot of countries don't care about the sanctions and are just picking up oil cheaper than they normally could have, uh, such as China and India. So. Okay, uh, the jobs keep piling in. There's a labor shortage. There's twice as many jobs as there are people interested in working. The labor force participation rates continuing to recover. Uh, credit of banks is growing at a very fast clip. Consumers are borrowing at a very fast clip. Retail sales continue to grow uh, three months straight and we've hit a new all time high in US consumer spending. Okay, we're, uh, importing record amounts of goods and home sales, even at these extremely high uh, interest rates, keep on cranking in. So I do not see a crashing US economy at this point. Now China's economy uh, is a different story. So we can see their PMI has now gone to 44 and their imports exports, this was printing very weird till recently. You can see there's been a significant drop in Chinese exports and imports. Uh, so that should be predicting lower interest rates ahead and a slowdown. Uh, okay, here's the US balance sheet peaking out now at $8.95 trillion. No more money printing in the US for now. Uh, and then the European central banks are still printing rapidly. Okay, very good. So we're about to switch gears to the safe growth track record, the high risk track record, the exact asset allocation and what trade alerts we see coming. But if you're not a paid member, you're gonna miss out. You need to call Dean to upgrade at 505-322-7515. That way you won't miss the next trade alert. 